the headline of the day thus far is the US CPI inflation number. And uh, I'm looking at the Financial Times here in London, uh, Nick, and it says US CPI not soft enough for more than a quarter point cut. So that would explain the market doldrums, let's call them, so far today. Because um, I think there are some disappointed uh, market analysts out there who are expecting a lower number, which would have led to a more likely 50 basis point cut. Yeah, I think that's a good way of putting it, Johnny. So CPI came out uh, as expected to 2.5%, but I want to add a little bit of a a disclaimer there. So leading up to this event, there was a forecast for 2.6% as the forecast by a lot of these, you know, different sites that forecast this stuff. And we actually got 2.5, which the the revised forecast was 2.5. So we came in in line. Um, But to your point there that you just made about expectations for next week and that that you know really is what this is all about we've got about a week to go here before the fed makes their first decision as to whether or not they're going to cut rates by 25 basis points or 0.25 percent or 50 basis points 0.5 percent and uh today's data was sort of the last uh last chance for those who were thinking a potential 50 basis point cut would be likely. Um, it is still, of course, possible that that happens just by some, uh, you know, bizarre turn of events. But very likely now, we are expecting 25 basis points uh, from the Fed next week because, again, CPI is coming in 2.5%. It is cooling in line with expectations. If it were cooling a lot faster than expectations, 50 basis points probably would be more uh, potentially appropriate or, or likely. Uh, but today's figure, again, kind of locks us in, I would argue, for that 0.25% interest rate cut next week with the first uh, expected rate cut from the Fed. Uh, again, we other <clears throat> other things to mention here is that core CPI, 3.2% year over year. And that is uh, <clears throat> basically still coming down, but not like a, you know, we're not seeing core CPI down in the mid twos. We're seeing core CPI still above three. So there's some argument there that the Fed can take their time to begin cutting interest rates. Labor market data also was a big um, contingency factor here for whether or not the Fed was going to cut by a larger amount or a smaller amount to kick things off for the Fed cuts. Uh, And labor data last week was a bit mixed, right? You had uh, jobs added were lighter than expected. They revised the previous jobs added uh, as well lower. So jobs added were a bit weak, but unemployment rate went lower. So uh, you had a bit of a mixed jobs print last time around. And then now you've got inflation figures that are cooling, but not rapidly cooling, if you will. So 25 basis points does seem to be the appropriate uh, first move here uh, and would signal a little bit uh, you know, more stability here. I actually think that we've talked about this many times in the podcast, a 50 basis point cut could potentially spook investors depending on how the Fed delivers it. Because if you get, you know, a 50 basis point cut, uh, it could signal that the Fed feels that they may have waited a bit too long to begin the process. Why didn't you start with 25? So I think uh, 25 basis points uh, next week would be sort of a a middle ground to get things started, but not too quickly. Uh, The market's reaction here today to the CPI print, uh, S&P 500 down 1.35% at the time of recording. NASDAQ's down one2 Dow Jones about one and a half uh, and the Russell down about 1.6. That's the U.S. indices. Meanwhile, the dollar index is about flat here on the day. And we got gold just modestly lower uh, and oil prices have been falling off a cliff, Johnny. Yes, they have. I'm looking at the price of Brent at the moment, still below that uh, magical mark of uh, $70 a barrel. Of course, uh, WTI uh, lower than that as well, around 66 and a half at the moment. Actually, it has gone up a bit today, but the trend is certainly down. And uh, if you look at the uh, five years um, over that period, uh, the last time we saw uh, the oil price below 70 was way, way, way back in December 2021. Uh, what is the trend here? Yeah, oil prices, uh, you know, despite being a little bit uh, more fun when we all go to fill up our gas at the pump, it's a little cheaper. Uh, We do have to look into this with a little bit of caution. We have to ask ourselves a few questions about what this big slide in oil prices could be telling us about the state of the global economy. 
Now, there's two sides to the oil market that we, you know, break down when we talk about oil on the podcast, which is, you know, when oil is moving higher or lower, we have to ask ourselves about the demand side of oil, and we have to ask ourselves about the supply side of oil. And I think if we start with supply, supply is not too big of an issue. We know the U.S. has been, you know, uh, producing more oil than ever. We've also seen OPEC, you know, still producing plenty of oil. So we see uh, the supply side not too constrained. <clears throat> but at the same time, there are some ongoing geopolitical events that keep a bit of a premium on the price of oil at any given time, just because a flare up in the Middle East or Ukraine or China and Taiwan, any of those events could suddenly uh, lock up the supply of oil. That being said, I don't think the supply uh, side of this story is too much, um, you know, of the focus right now. In fact, the OPEC, uh, OPEC actually just released recently, uh, they, they cited low demand outlook for um, oil. And at the same time, we also recently saw some weak China uh, statistics from their economy. And we've seen labor data out of the United States starting to cool. Um, we've seen Europe uh, sort of uh, stuttering and starting. And I, I think that when you look at that, you say, okay, there's clearly a, a demand side um, question to be to be looked at. We see oil prices falling very very quickly despite ongoing conflicts. That tells me that the demand for oil globally could be waning a little bit here. So that tells us, you know, with inflation falling uh, to 2.5 percent today year over year headline CPI. Yes, that is good news. But is it possible that the economy, even the arguably strongest one of the world, the United States, one of the, you know, the, the biggest, the most powerful economies, even that one's starting to really show signs of cooling off? Uh, that has a lot to say about whether or not oil prices go up and down. And, and so when oil is showing big slides to the downside, I think that that is uh, a little bit of a cause for concern about global markets and where we're headed. Will the rate cuts start to, you know, uh, reaccelerate the economies of the world? It's very possible. But again, as we get closer, we do have to pay attention to the economic stats, which are starting to come in a little bit light. If you enjoyed this video from the Market Insights Market Pulse podcast, you can listen to the full episode by clicking the link down below in the description. You can find us on your favorite podcasting apps. And again, we post several times a week. So if you're looking for market updates throughout the week, this is the place to be, whether you're in the, in the car on the way to work or something like that, make sure to tune in to get the latest. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.